Hello, everybody. I am Justin with Is This Gary Wisconsin, joined by my friend Gage. And this is our second time, now third time trying to what? record this. Fourth, Fifth probably. or 20th time trying to record this, because the first time we have an awesome video. I might even link it in the description so you guys can watch the original. I don't have any sound from Gage because I screwed up in setting this up and I feel like a total idiot. Because if you watched it blindfolded, it'd be like a schizophrenia. Simulator. It was maybe, <laughs> maybe one of our best re uh, reviews ever. Oh. We, we nailed it so well and I just dropped the ball. My brother did have some points he wanted to make. Uh, he said it's hard to find and they actually ended up driving by it. Um, they had good inline and waiting room scares. There were a few dry rooms in the house that were very noticeable. He did think he saw a few water bottles. He'd like to see them clear that up. We'll talk more on that later. Of course, he's doing a massive shout out to Texas Chainsaw, Face Off, Butcher, and the Clown Ladies. Uh, he says the strobe light room and the dark maze were kind of misses for him. And he loves the fact that this larger location allows them to flesh out their rooms more. This uh, was very important to see them do for him, and he's very glad that they did it. So just kind of a few things. He had a couple other things that he was talking about, but they ended up being kind of like major house spoilers, and I don't want to get too deep into that, Gage. I think you're right. Um, so without further ado, we're going to jump right into the Revenge Hot 2024 review at their new location in Pulaski, Wisconsin. Finally, Pulaski is known for something more than just churches and polkas. Here we go. Is there a website? Yes. Does it have good information? Yes. Is there parking on site? Yes. Is it clearly labeled? Yes. Though it is very easy to miss. <clears throat> Are there clear queue lines? Yes. Are the attractions clearly marked? Yes. Are atmospheric music and audio selections appropriate? Yes. Did actors stay in character? Yes. Was the haunt fully well-staffed for the most part? Yes. Was there clear directions through the haunt? Yes, we loved the concept of the red doors. Was the lighting used appropriate? Yes. Was there unusual sense? Yes. Did you catch another group? No. Was the scenery appropriate for the most part? Did the haunt maintain immersion for the most part? Was the walking path safe and well-maintained? Yes. Did the haunt feel appropriately priced? Yes. And did the haunt have a good atmosphere? Yes. Uh, they lost a point because there were a lot of recycled rooms. They lost another point because there were several empty rooms, especially at the beginning that we noticed. And they lost a point for we saw a few water bottles in a bathtub that we did not think belonged in those scenes. They didn't really match or fit what was going on. Uh, so overall, they scored 37 out of 40 points on general. Gage, scares, take it away. For scares, revenge had all right i i didn't realize how hard it is to read a paper under green light when you're exhausted <laughs> did actors attempt to scare you yes were masks used that were good quality yes did props seem real and scary yes were the actors in the correct positions to enhance your scares i give them a one out of two for this one uh more on it later uh were there a variety of monsters on the height on the site uh, pertaining to different themes yes did the actors try to scare you twice in the scene? Yes. Did the actors try to scare you uh, three times in the scene as well as props? Yes. Uh, did any actors scare you from below the waist? No. I take that one off. However, there was an actor that did scare you from above the waist. Was there more than jump scares in the haunt? Yes. Was there a good go home scare? Yes. Were scares the same as last year or is it just the same old scary? No, they... At this point, I feel like it was a good five. I did really enjoy this new environment. Did actors seem well-trained and enthusiastic? Yes. Were all props, animatronics, in working order? Yes. Were there any unique scares? Yes. Did anyone scream get out? Thankfully not. And did any sounds used enhance the scares? And yes, totally. Oh, again, I want to reiterate, I, I want to echo what he said. This is like our fourth attempt making this. I'm a little exhausted right now. <laughs> How many points? In total, 
That brought them to 37 points out of 40. So 74 is their standing total. 74 out of 80. <clears throat> All right, let's make some general commentary on the haunt. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Sure, I, I will make some general commentary. <clears throat> now, is this, um, are we touching on the reason why we knocked some points off for this? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the reason why I knocked a few points off, uh, albeit very seldom, uh, was where the actress in the correct positions to enhance scares. There were a few times with some sliding doors where they tried to get a good jump scare out of me. However, they I had to turn late. around and look at them. They were late, yeah. They, they were late. Um, and the other one, I had a dock kind of self-explanatory. There wasn't really any scares from below the waist. Uh, there were quite a few scares from above. So that's, that's only the couple that I did dock from. I do want to ask something, though. Can they use famous killers? I don't know if you can really answer this question. I'm referring to, like, you know, they Mike can, Myers. They can, they can do whatever they want. They can? They can, okay. they, can, they can use whatever they want. That's on them. But, you know, I mean, there are, there are plenty of reviewers that, I guess, prefer... They not use recognizable Some originality, re recognizable things in their haunt. Okay. Um, I I guess you know if you want to take the risk and use movie characters, that's up to you. Cause I I don't know if you can get in trouble for that, but I'm not I'm not here to oust. We're any, no lawyers. We yeah, don't I'm, know. I'm not here to I'm not here to oust any haunts for using specific characters. I personally don't care as long as the scare is exactly. good. Exactly. And as long as you know, they say imitation is the best form of flattery. That That is kind of how I look at that. Like, hey, you know, you guys did this one or you guys did this character. Hey, it was really good, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, was a, it was a really nice nod, a really nice callback to certain, you know, to certain characters. I mean, by no means am I saying that's bad or that's good. It's just I was curious about that because I don't see very many haunts do that. We'll talk about so. it more. We'll talk about it more off off video. Sure. All right. Well, I'm with my general commentary. You know, I I want to say there did feel like there were some. I want to echo what Jared said that there did feel like there were some empty rooms towards the beginning. But you know, here's the best part is is that that's just kind of the warm up. Uh, the next the the there was an empty room after after room empty room. It would seem such. But then as soon as you start hitting, you know, towards the end of the haunt. It just, they kept wham, 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 hitting you left, right, up, down, left, right. So, you know you know what I mean. And so what I'm saying is every room seemed to have, it was chock full of actors. So sure, the beginning part felt rather slow, or I wouldn't call it dull, it's just slow because you just didn't have any actors. I'm really glad to see that the end of the haunt really paid off. That's normally how that pacing should be. It should be like that roller coaster. Uh, so... Yeah, that's how I felt about revenge, at least just in a general gist of that. Yeah, so I said we took a point off for immersion. Jared pointed out that there were a few water bottles in one of the bathtubs that just didn't seem like they belonged there. But mm -hmm. uh, overall, my experience at Revenge Haunt 2024 was, was very solid. Uh, we went there together, and of course, it was conspired behind my back and behind closed doors that I would be going in alone. Um, and you too, correct? So, because you did it, and they know that I'm from Is It Scary, they said, well, you got to do it, too. And I'm like, shit. So, <laughs> so, yeah, a great way, if you think you're a big tough guy who ain't afraid of nothing, a great way to experience Revenge Haunt is to do it alone. It's a lot of fun. It's a really good time. Um, the atmosphere, when I first got put into the very, very first chamber where they kind of give you the rules and the lowdown, this was nice. This was very nice. It gives you a sense of there is a real creep factor that they build up with that. And uh, everything that comes after that just keeps the, keeps the tension, keeps the tension. Wondering when it's going to happen, wondering when it's going down. Then they turn you around and bring you in. And it's just, I mean, it's a madhouse. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so some of the timing was off on some of the drop panel scares, which is why I know, Gage, we talked about taking a few points off or taking a point off for actors being in the correct positions and timing, stuff like that. Um, 
We did, however, see that improve as the night went on, and that was really nice. Uh, one thing I like about Revenge Haunt is they're very, very good with how they handle misdirection. Um, there were a lot of times where one character would get your attention and another character would come flying at you from off, from kind of off stage left or stage right. And that was, that was very, very good. It's something that I can give a nod to, give a bump to. And, uh, I really liked a lot, of course. Um, this is also the first time I've been to a haunt that has two different floors. I like that about this. And they have it set up so as you're going down to the second floor, down to the basement, you're seeing certain things. And that is a feeling uh, of dread as you're heading down. And of course, you're just seeing these things and you're thinking, oh my goodness, what is going on here? What is going to happen here? This is wild. So I really, I, I really enjoyed the pacing. I enjoyed the setup. I enjoyed, we talked about this during our Green Bay Fear review. And now Gage, I want to step, just step away from the review. I'm talking directly to you. This is what I'm talking about when you set things up and you deliver, right? Mm -hmm. They had the anticipation there in the very first couple rooms and they delivered on it. We we were waiting for that big kabam, and they gave it to us. That is a payoff in a haunted house, and that is how you do it right. Revenge does that very, very right. Um, and, of course, you know, I, I get through it. I, I do want to say one thing that I didn't say in our initial video. The whispering and the talking in my ear in the dark room as much as i'm going to touch on it i wasn't a huge fan of it overall but the way they handled sound in that room was really quite excellent there was a lot of over here and is it scary and like there was like whispering and it was almost like it was right in my ears and that was really good i forgot about that last night and i'm i'm almost happy we got to re-record what i want to did you i it cut out for me here did you say when the whisper said is it scary yeah <laughs> yeah yeah they did I, I, oh <laughs> they did and nice. it was it was very creepy because it was right in my ears and i was looking at the guy down the hallway you see i want to bring that up too but finish what you have to say so uh i am afraid of the dark i also have extreme separation anxiety and one of my worst nightmares that I've ever had, these monsters are like coming at me and charging at me and running at me. And of course, I close my eyes as I fall off and fade off and wake up, you know, except at revenge, you don't wake up. And this guy was kind of coming towards me all wild and crazy like, and I couldn't get away. So it reminded me of that, and it it actually brought some of those nightmarish feelings to life for me, and it was really good. I, you know, I know this review probably won't capture the initial feeling we had last night when we did this review. Because mm -hmm. we were very, and we were. It animate. was it was probably our best review we've ever done. And I just, I want the viewers to know, if you want a scary haunted attraction, you're going to revenge haunt. Period. That's the end of the statement. Mm -hmm. You um, know, sorry. No, go ahead. If you have some points you want to make, go ahead. And then we're going to do extra points. You know, that whole idea that, and, and I know what the room you talked about. I'm not going to say it for spoiler reasons, but I wish that happened to me. We talked about last night. I wish that happened to me. I feel like I would have, I would have, my review score might have changed if that would happen to me. But it scared the I, hell, it scared the hell out of me. I want to make a note, you guys, because and I, one thing I am glad we're redoing this because I didn't say this last, I didn't say this last night. Um, when, because you went first mm -hmm. alone, I followed up alone, and then there was the group of two and then a group of four, whichever, however that was behind us. 
But anyways, I was shortly just behind you. And when I got done, you were waiting there. You should have seen your like your you should have seen your emotions. You looked like you were like almost mentally disturbed. And it you looked out of it like you're you were on edge. And I was like, You okay, bro? I like, was <laughs> I was drained. Uh, because as you know, that's me overcoming two of my strongest fears. Mm -hmm. And my brother, my brother is, he's got it. He's got it figured out, right? He's got life figured out. He actually came up to me after the show and he actually said to me, how do you do more than one of these in a night? Hmm. And that's Jared saying that to me. He really did, huh? He, honest to goodness, he said that to me. How do you do more than one of these a night? I'm like, that was intense, wasn't it? And he's like, yeah. Wow. It only gets worse, too. Yeah, yeah. He, he, <laughs> actually, he actually said that to me. How do you do more than one of these a night? Almost like like he had respect for the the gusto and the guts. Because I remember when you always try to take off for one of these, he's like, "Oh, I take off that stupid, yeah, oh, hocus yeah. pocus bullcrap." Yeah, bull he, crap. he always he always does kind of hassle me about it a little bit. He's like, "Well, I know you want the Saturdays off in October to go do your haunted house things. You know, Sarah and I want the weekends off in September. We want to go on some little stayaways and getaways." I'm like, "Okay, I'll add two or three new haunts to my to my schedule then this this October. You know, because I was going to have to miss half of them, but." Mm -hmm. Yeah, he actually said that to me. How do you do more than one of these a night? And I'm like, I'm like, this is, I'm like, dude, this is a Saturday night. Like, this is you business. power through, baby. I'm like, this you is, do. I'm like, this is business. Like, this is what I do. A right? business. Like, a you business. know, like I'm going through. Like, dude, I got to do it. You know, Friday night we did Green Bay Fear, and Saturday night we did Revenge. And I if I have to describe Revenge in a handful of words, Smash Mouth in your face, uncomfortable. And I like it. I like that a lot. Gage, let's talk personal points. Sure. I gave it additional points for the intensity, the actors and the scares. They're not afraid to get in your face. There is no personal space at this haunted attraction. If you are one of those people that cannot handle somebody being right here constantly, don't go. It's and I'm nose to nose, and that's nose, how close we're it's talking. nose to nose, and they don't care. They are on you. You pull away. They'll they'll advance. they follow you. <laughs> they follow you. They don't mm -hmm. care. Uh, I gave an additional point. They forced me to go alone without my knowledge. My girlfriend Lynn sold me out. Hi, baby. She sold me out. So did all of my friends, and then I had to be the first in our group to go through alone. There was already a feeling in the air. And let me make this very apparent. When we first pulled up, when we first pulled up, I turned to Gage and I said, this concerns me. Because there was nobody there. I remember, I, I, I pulled you aside and I said, this kind of worries me, bro. And of course, everybody had to get in the huddle we were doing because they wanted to be a part of it, you know? They don't want to be a part of it until they're there and then they all want to be a part of the circle, right? They all want to be a part everyone of it. Everyone wants to be, is it scary? Everybody, everyone yeah. wants to be an is it all scary All of a sudden, reviewer. everybody wants to be an is it scary reviewer when that's the cool thing to do. <laughs> Just know we started doing it. If it ain't is it scary, it ain't shit. Uh, and... So, of course, they all had a circle around. It's like, what, what do you want? What's going on, Justin? And I, I said, good. and I said, this concerns me. There's nobody here. Um, and I actually thought, did something happen to revenge? Did they lose their luster? Is this the end? And then we started interacting with the crew in the opening and in the starting area. And they were messing with us. And, oh, starting to get the feeling that maybe okay this is the old revenge feeling okay 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 and then go well let me get my girlfriend no you're going alone the hell i am no you're going alone and immediately immediately 
I was reminded of why I hate revenge so much. In a good way. In a good way. And I'm just like, they got me. They immediately brought a sense of dread on when they did that. They immediately made me feel vulnerable. They immediately had me on edge, on high tension. And they get an extra point for that. That was really, really good. Um, most of the scares were on point. I'm giving an extra, I'm giving an extra point for this as well. Most of the scares they had were really top tier. Um, uh, my brother wanted me to make sure I shouted some people out. Face off guy. Uh, whew, man, Ch uh, Texas Chainsaw, the girls in the clown room. He wanted to make sure I gave props to those because they were awesome. He really, really liked that. And honestly, most of the scares were really on point. Yeah, there was some mistimings early on in the house. But for the most part, when the scares picked up, they were all right in your face and right on point. Uh, I want to give another uh, point for a variety of characters and haunters. I saw things that I have not seen before in a haunted house. Again, I want to give a shout out to Baphomet, to Bug Girl, and to Face Off Guy. Very, very good. Um, plus one to room variety as well as phobia rooms. I know I did dock a point for being a lot of reused sets. But that's mainly just for scenery. But as far as variety goes, they have so many different things going on in this house. They have so many different scenes, so many different experiences for you to have. So I gave an extra point for that as well. Mm -hmm. I also gave an extra point for misdirection. Those scares were straight up awesome and when they happened i was like great misdirection that was excellent and here i am talking about it on my way out of the room and they're probably just like this guy's an idiot that coffin guy brought me into the big tunnel i couldn't get away from this scare and it creeped me out it actually made me put my arms up in front of me and like i i'm like i'm sorry if i hit you i'm sorry if i hit you and it was so so good because it was straight out of my nightmares an additional point for that Plus one, I'm giving point two Baphomet on the typewriter. Super, super wholesome room. I really liked them. I have my suspicions over who was playing that character just by the little hand motions that they did and by how they acted. Um, but what I did want to say was that was a room in the house where it felt like I got to catch my breath. And then the moment I got ready to leave, bam, they hit me again. And it was freaking crazy. Plus one for a very wholesome room with the little creature with the typewriter. It was great. And I give an additional point, giving a total of nine additional points for the go home scare being absolutely a plus. Now, I am going to say this at this point before we go any further. I recommend that Revenge comes up with a new final scare. Thank you, honey. I, I wasn't talking to you, buddy. Sorry. I know, I know you weren't. I, rec <laughs> I recommend that Revenge comes up with a new final scare. I like it. I love it. But I don't need any more of it. They know exactly what scare prop I'm talking about. It's time for something new. But I do, in this review, I want to give an additional point for the way you executed your final scare of the house. The misdirection was great. I saw the exit. I felt safe. And you immediately reminded me that I'm at Revenge Haunt in Pulaski. And you just mugged me before I got to leave. And it was outstanding. So, with my nine points, that brings you to 83. Gage, personal points. Take it away. Every room felt unique, as in each almost had a visual story to tell. Yeah. Uh, every room that you stepped into felt like this is a whole different haunt of a sort, you know? It's like... You know what? I'm moving on. I'm sleepy as all hell. <laughs> what? I'm tired. But yes. Hey, I love those rooms. My next point is Jax. If you know Jax, that's all you got to say. That's my extra point. Jax. My next extra point is the waiting room. 
Because that waiting room, it's a party. It's a rave. If you follow us on Instagram, shout out, by the way, up right, right up there. Um, if you follow us on Instagram, I posted some pictures, and I said, believe us, we're not at a nightclub right now. We're in a waiting room for a haunted house. <laughs> because it looks, feels, and just the energy of it is like a nightclub. My next additional point was the sense of direction. You know, you could say like, oh, okay, yeah, you just move on to the next door. But this one has visual cues. If you ever played a video game, and on these video games, there's always like a golden path. Something to say, hey, you're supposed to go this way, like a light or something. Revenge does that similar take, but with the red doors. I forgot where exactly it was mentioned, whether it was the first introduction, gentlemen, or the, the TV. If you want to chime in, Justin, please let me know. But I, it's either one of them. I, one told me to follow the red doors. The next point I want to say is intensity. Because realm and intensity go hand in hand, and they are yeah. not... Do realm and intensity go hand in hand? Revenge and intensity goes hand in hand. Can you explain why I yeah, say realm? So Gage screwed this up in the other review too. He and I, apparently I'm still doing it. He keeps saying realm because we were planning to go to realm last night, but we didn't. And we also talked about going to realm next weekend today so it's fresh in his mind it also starts with an r it also second r, letter, r e second letter is also an e so in his brain he's he's screwing it up that's why he keeps saying realm he's not referring to that he's referring to revenge thank you thank you i liked how you explained that because it's, it's like you're you're like describing a creature on national geographic it's what you were just doing there so moving on my next additional point every character slash actor felt important and almost damn near unique. Each had their own story. Each was, felt like I said, felt important. They talked to you. It's not like some guy going, oh, and that's it. And they just, you know, evaporate into the darkness. Each one got in your face with a different story, whether they were fun, mean, aggressive, or mm -hmm. passive. Mm -hmm. or it's, passive. They, they, were, they all had their unique gists about them, and I enjoyed that. And like you said, the, the what's that want to be? Baphomet. The Baphomet. That, that was a really cute character. I loved yeah, that room. It was, it, was, it was wholesome. And my last additional point is pacing. Because that was slow. It started off slow. I, want, I brought up to you afterwards to, like, that felt really slow when we got done with the haunt, but it made sense the later on, the more you got into the haunt, it starts hitting you left and right. They how start many, hooking you. How many mm -hmm. additional points did you give them? So this is going to be in total seven. Mm, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. But the pacing, I had it award a point for that. And this, that pacing was good. Pacing was mm -hmm. very good. Mm hmm. It puts their overall score at a 90 out of 100. A great haunt. Uh, we need to talk about MVAs. Go ahead, Gage. My MVA is Mr. Faceoff. Now, I liked giving him that like name. Like in that movie, Faceoff? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Faceoff. That should just be his name now. I want to explain why. So, you know, I walk into this, this little hallway here. And when we were talking about personal space earlier... Personal space is not your friend. Not your friend in revenge. If you have personal space issues, don't don't come to revenge. When I approached this guy, I'm like, okay, here's another actor. You know, he's just going to get in my face, say blah, whatever, hopefully not get out, and just move on. <laughs> so, you know, and I, we're going to play a little, we're going to act a little here. You, the viewer, are the scarer, and I am me. This is what the scarer normally sees. When they, when they try to scare me, you know, I would give them an awkward look over like, oh, <laughs> nice. And just like look away quickly because I don't like making eye contact. That makes me nervous, you know, stuff like that. I didn't have a choice. 
Mr. Faceoff got in my face. All right? He, Jenna, are you peeking? Stop. I'm trying to focus. She's peeking at me when I'm trying to record this video. Stop. As I was saying, he was getting in my personal bubble. He got in my face. I pulled it back. And he advanced. And I'm like, oh, sh okay, all right. I backed up again. He got closer. And I didn't really want to look at him until I realized what he was doing. And he, you know what? The name says it all. You'll find out when you go to the hunt. Mr. Faceoff is my MVA. My MVA is the butcher. Made me very uncomfortable. And had a great scare. Now, the reason I chose the butcher... I knew this scare was coming, and I want everybody to be aware of that. I was ready. I'm a seasoned haunt goer. You're probably not going to really surprise me with very many things. Other than telling me I'm going first out of nowhere at what I consider to be the scariest haunt in the state. But anyway, here I am, walking into this room, and what do I see? A big metal table right under the only light in the room. I know it's coming. Actor's going to come up and smash something on the, the table. Big loud noise. Make me jump. And I'm going to move on. I know it's coming. I'm ready for it. This giant butcher dude dove onto the table. Smashed into it, snarled at me, rolled off of it, got right in my face, and would not let me proceed. Tried to go around and continue to get in my way until finally I was allowed to continue. This made me very uncomfortable because I thought I was actually ready for this. I was not ready to see this gigantic creature literally dive onto this table. This is next level scare acting that takes you from a simple Bleh! scare into a whoa scare. That's the difference between great scare acting and okay scare acting that everybody does. Not everybody is willing to put their bodies on the line to elicit a scare, especially out of somebody they know it's going to be tough to scare. A plus butcher, well played. Any final thoughts, Gage? Intense. <laughs> very, very intense. If you're looking to a haunt, for a haunted attraction to go to and you actually want to have some good scares and get scared, you are going to revenge haunt in Pulaski. Like I said, finally, Pulaski is known for more than Smarawa's Bakery and the Polkas. Anyway, out of 90 out of 100, it's our highest rated haunt so far this season. If you've been to revenge this year, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Make sure you guys like the video. Give us your thoughts down below. If you're a scare actor there and this review helped you in any way, shape, or form, let us know as well. And at the end of the day, there is just one question you have to ask. Is it scary, Wisconsin? Have a good night.